there was a road in a town. <clears throat> this road led, led to everywhere. So it led from the village to the main square, from the main square to the palace. It led from this town to that town and all the way back. Essentially, every single person eventually got on this road. It led to the market. Everybody used it. It was the main thoroughfare. Along this road, it was gorgeous. So people would just walk down this path and stop and just look over this beautiful view. One day, people woke up. They got on their way to the market or to do whatever they needed to do. And they get out on the road, and there's a huge boulder blocking the road. So people get out and they have their carts, they have their work, they have whatever they have to do. They're like, why is there a boulder in the middle of the road? And how is it that the king would even allow such a thing to happen? And it's not even like so early in the morning the market is already open. Why hasn't the king taken care of this huge Holder or wherever it came from, that is in the middle of the road. People were griping about this all day as they're like kind of trying to like squish their way past the rock and like the forest, which is really tight next to them, or or maybe piling branches and logs and, and like scooting their way over the whatever they're trying to do. And some people just gave up and they just went back and tried to find another way. But people were really, really annoyed. Until at one point, a farmer comes with this big load of stuff they need to get to the market and come to this huge boulder. And she looks at the big boulder and she thinks to herself, that is really inconvenient. <laughs> I have all this stuff that I need to get to market in. And I bet if this boulder is here and I'm inconvenienced, my guess is probably everybody else's too. So she got out of her cart and took whatever tools she had and started chipping away this huge boulder. Hour after hour after hour, Chipping away. Every once in a while, somebody would come and she'd be like, hey, can I get a little help? People would be like, all right, I can give you a little bit, a few minutes, an hour. And other people, can I get some help? And they're like, Ugh, why is it? I gotta go. But as the day went on, finally, she got the whole boulder pretty much gone. So as she's finishing and she's just got like a, that last, those last big rocks, right? She's getting rid of them and she sees a bag with a note on it. So she picks up this bag and reads the note. And it's from the king. I put this boulder in the middle of the road, said the note. I did it because I was wondering what people would do. Would they sort of place blame and go find other ways? Would they sort of help each other, maneuver around it? Or would somebody maybe take care of it? I was pretty convinced at least one of you I was going to do that. So I left this bag with gold and this note. Because you really helped. Not just yourself, but everybody in my kingdom. So I want to help you. So I know it's probably really hard. It was probably not really good to know that 
one who like really put this here, but I want to thank you for thinking of everybody else as well. This Torah portion talks about the Jubilee year. Now we talked about how the four corners of your land, those had to be left. So every seven years was called a Shvita year. So you had to leave your land be. You couldn't harvest it. You couldn't grow anything from it. If the only thing that could be done is if something for the benefit of the land needed to be done, like a big, I don't know, boulder fall out. So that's the only thing that could be done. The Jew, after seven cycles of this Shemitah year, where all the land is there and you, you have to welcome people in, it's just everybody can take of it. After seven cycles of that seven year, you have something <coughs> called the Jubilee year, which is basically like the Shemitah year on steroids. What I want to focus on is the fact that in the Jubilee year, <coughs> not only does your land, everything have to be let grow wild. And everybody is welcome to come and take of the bounty that just grows there. Not only that, let's say that you have a fence that surrounds your land. That fence, that gate has to be left open. So not only are people allowed to be there, but people are welcomed in to be in your land taking of the land. There are other laws about forgiven, forgiveness of debts and things like that that happen in this year. The main point is we, a community was built upon the fact that nobody went hungry. Everybody had to leave food for everybody. Whether you were part of the community or whether you were a stranger coming through. Then every seven years, yes, it's good for your land, but God, it's like paying your rent. God says, you gotta remember, this land is mine. And you get every week a Shabbat, a Sabbath. So my land gets also a Sabbath. And that means that everybody gets a communal Sabbath. So everybody can come in and join in equally of my land. We all have stumbling blocks and boulders in our lives. Some of them we've gotten over and some of them we are working on and there are going to be more. But the stumbling blocks that we have are man-made, are human-made. This Torah portion, the idea of the Shemitah, the idea of this land, teaches us that those of us who have managed to get over and overcome our own border boulders have to remember there are people on the other side. It's our responsibility not to just walk away. That those people deserve to see this side of that boulder. Maybe we can't move it. Maybe that we can't do. But we can come together and figure out a way to help them over the hump so that everybody, again, can be equal and enjoy this world, this planet, God's world, together. Mm -hmm.
just feel that we're all here. <coughs> community makes community, and we are our community. So let's work together to make our community somewhere where everybody can feel safe and good and equal, and we can all live on this side of the border. Shabbat shalom.